You know, this is one of those times when you're kind of just playing with your toy, minding your own business, and then your friend comes along and you're like, yeah, we can play, and then just some random uninvited dude is like, can I play too? Yeah, we're talking about the people that got their 3090s on their leaderboard above ours before Steve and I truly got Rip GN going. So you know what I'm gonna do today? I'm gonna take our rightful spot back on the leaderboard. EVGA is proud to announce their all-new XR1 OBS certified 4K capture card. Record at 1080p60 while you game at 4K60 with HDR with advanced pass-through mode that allows you to switch to 144Hz refresh rate at the press of a button, meaning no longer do you need to disconnect or disable to get the full capabilities of your display. To see the full list of capabilities and configurations, click the EVGA link in the description below. So our last score was done with the 3090 um, Founders Edition card uh, with our air conditioner, if you remember. Cust you know, no custom BIOS, no nothing. And that was just to see where we were going to start. Ugh. You know what's inevitably happening is the people with their custom AIBs and stuff are starting to pop up, which is why we're going to be using our 3090 for the Win 3 card and maybe an air conditioner or two just to see where we end up today. It's a pointless video on a graphics card that clearly is not a value to gamers and that's what makes it amazing, actually. So this is actually the first time I've opened this card. Um, had it, obviously, since before they launched, and I have not even taken... That was some thick tape, guys. <laughs> um, I'm going to take a look at it for the first time with you. So here's the thing. NVIDIA has recently come out with their driver fix for the... Uh, the what is that sound? Anyway, whatever. They come out with their driver fix for the crashing problem or whatever. And apparently what that's doing is it's just using the driver to, wow, well, it's actually weighty. They're using the driver to slow things down a little bit so that you don't, uh, hey, support bracket. Okay, sorry, I'm getting all kinds of. It's a newer driver that makes your GPU slightly slower so less people crash. We're not gonna be updating our driver to that because we don't want our card slowing down at all. But I highly recommend if you've got a card that's crashing, download the latest NVIDIA drivers. But Jay, they're slowing us down, that makes us mad. Then return your card. That's really the only other option you have. That's the fix. Return your card, get your money back. You know, I'm kind of impressed at the way that this, this bar looks like solid metal, but it's not. The whole thing lights up. It's pretty neat how they came up with that. I mean, whether or not you care about RGB or not, I think that's a neat little function there. Turn that frown upside down. So if you guys are wondering about doing SLI, Jay, SLI is dead, nobody cares about SLI. Well, guess what? <laughs> NVIDIA put it, the bridge on sale on their website and it lasted about three minutes. So that means a lot of people bought or planned to buy two 3090s. So anyway, if you line up the bracket and you take a look at it, you can see the FE bridge does not line up with the Founders Edition bridge or the EVGA bridge. That just means you obviously need to make sure if you're running SLI to get to the exact same card, which is what you should be doing anyway. So here's the 3090 for the Win 3 card uh, on there. I didn't realize the fans had this kind of a weird offset deal, but it, this is really bug and fail. He wants them all to be in a straight line. It still has the clown lips on both ends. Fortunately, those little covers are coming up with to fix that, but this is more importantly what we're talking about here. Look, we fell down to seven. That's my air conditioned 3090 right there. And this guy right here, that guy, he called us out on Twitter. He's like, ha ha, beat you. <laughs> Lord, you're, 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 Lord, stupid. So it doesn't really matter. So here it is right here, the 3090. We're gonna go ahead and use MSI Afterburner. Um, I had to actually speed up my, so part of my score I think was a little bit low because I, had, I didn't realize that my, my um, CPU was being limited to five gigahertz. And believe it or not, 5.2, 5.3 does make a difference even on Port Royal. Uh, beyond that, it's kind of a diminished return where it doesn't really do anything and the amount of heat that it pumps in at that point is, is kind of ridiculous. So here's what we're gonna do. There are functions built into EVGA cards that are only unlocked and usable in PX1. Although overclocking functionality is very similar, things like LED control, um, you know, all three fans can be controlled individually. You can't do that in MSI Afterburner. So first things first, we're going default. Let's see what our scores are without touching anything, because I do like to see what our differences are. So 13,349 for the stock numbers. Actually, now that I think about it, I think that's where our stock run was. All right, so all we're gonna change right now then is power limit max, and what was our 
frequency going to? So our GPU got up to 59C. Core clocks are sitting in the 18. I know you guys can't really see this. It's pretty, like the contrast is really poor, but spikes to like 1950, 1920. So we clearly need the average um, clock speed to be up. Let's just max out power limit, max out target. We'll make temperature the priority there. Um, let's go ahead and just max the voltage. Why the heck not? All right, so by just bumping up power limit and the fan speed, that allows us to have a more uh, steady clock. By keeping the additional power available to it and keeping the temps cooler, because our max temp on that one was, oh, 58. So really it came down to power, not even temperature. The thing is, each temperature has a very varying p state range to it. So every time, you, like one degree could kick you down into a lower p state table, which would lower the clocks. So getting the GPU as cold as possible, which is why we do the air conditioners and ice water and LN2 and all that stuff, forces you to be able to maintain clocks higher, um, at least in this range. The colder you go, that becomes more of a stability thing because of how hard you're pushing the core, and not just the heat it will generate, but also the colder it gets, usually the more stable it is, somewhat. Um, but anyway, this allowed us to at least keep our clocks much higher without even touching an overclock. So what I have to be careful of is because I'm seeing it spike to 2040, I have to be careful because any offset I add now is gonna add to that 2040. So if I add say 100, it'll potentially spike to 2140, which I don't think in this current configuration with these temps and, and just the air cooler is gonna give us anything stable. Let's take a look real quick at that guy that beat us. His GPU core clock says 2115, right? But if we look at the detailed result, average clock speed is 2035, right? So there's his spike. And then he maintained 2035 most of the time. My average clock frequency is 2053. So we're very comparable. So this is one of those things where it's becoming harder to tell exactly what made his score beat mine. So with all that out of the way, let's go ahead now and start pushing the clocks a little bit. So this isn't really giving me too much in the way of hopes here because we are crashing at some low numbers. I might have gotten a dud. If this isn't proof that we don't get hand-picked cards, I don't know what is. Every now and then I'll get a review sample that just doesn't perform. And like I said, temperature does play a role. And so we're gonna play around with that, obviously. All right, so we pulled back the core clock a little bit. And as you can see, at 14,201. So now I'm just gonna kind of keep screwing around with this before we start getting into any sort of custom solution here. Cause it's important to see where you max out before you start going to any sort of alternative cooling methods, whether it be air conditioner, ice water, LN2, dry ice or whatever. That way you can really kind of determine where your limits are and see how much additional you got. Because if we went right to AC, we wouldn't know where we were crashing first and we wouldn't know what our benefits of the AC was. And I know this video might seem really redundant versus our, our first time we did this, but considering that this is truly the RIP GN part and I know that he has been actively working on beating our score and the fact that other people have already beat us, it's important to kind of continuously see how far we can push the boundaries before we even start considering SLI. Because I've got to know where at least one car's max is going to be, determine if the next car to be able to match it, and then we have to reduce the, the fastest card down to match the slowest card, which is the unfortunate thing about SLI. So we're really close to where we were on air with our FE card. The funny thing is the FE card seems to be overclocking a little further than this guy, uh, but our memory can go way farther on this card than we were able to get with the FE. So I'm kind of stuck now without doing any sort of custom cooling, which is the next step because that, that's clearly not gonna cut it. That's like 400 points below where we currently are with the FE. But if we take a look at things here, uh, we maxed out at 57C. We know we want that cooler because around that temperature on the FE card is where we started seeing instability. And I was able to go plus 125 on the offset with the AC, but not on air. So I know we could potentially gain even more clock by cooling down the core some. 2115 is where the offset number will actually take us if there was no power limit and no temperature limit there. If it just ignored that and said, the offset's what we're gonna go to, um, that 2115 is where it would land. Cooling this down will get us closer to that because of, again, the P-state um, ratios, like I said. So, you know what's coming. Although I'm gonna do a little bit differently today. Instead of putting the box over it, making it all super cold, I'm gonna build a shroud that actually sends all of the AC air right through the graphics card. Now I know some of you are gonna freak out about condensation. And yes, that is a risk you take when you go below ambient air temperature, which is exactly what we're gonna get with the AC. However, it's not far enough below ambient to start getting droplets to form. You'll get what looks like that slight kind of a hazing of a real thin layer of condensation. However, because of the temperature difference inside of the graphics card and the air blowing through it, 
it's not going to form on the graphics card itself. It'll start to form on like the box and the AC and stuff like that. We've done this a bunch now. Yes, it is always an inherent risk when you start dealing with anything that takes temperatures below subambient, which an air conditioner is going to do. That's why we try and cool the AC or the studio down as much as we can before doing this. That way there's not a bigger delta of temperature between ambient air and the AC air. So with that said, let's build a shroud and let's see what happens when we throw this thing on some cold temps. Does that show you how rigid that is? <laughs> Never underestimate the power of duct tape and cardboard and painter's tape. All right, 14283 was our last score. So we have the exact same speeds right now. Plus 65 on the core, voltage is still at zero, 1250 on the memory, and our AC periscope, if you will, into the core and cold air literally coming out of every orifice that there's a gap uh, in the card. We're sitting idle at 11C. That's about 4C colder than the FE card when we had the box around the system. So my, my thinking process here is that if we're forcing all the cold air through the card under load, it might maintain a little bit lower average core uh, temp, which could give us a better average core clock. Okay, that is not the result I was hoping for. So we just beat our old score by a little bit, no surprise. The only difference we made was I ran our overclocks with MSI Afterburner and not PX1. Almost 300 point gain. 14,409. All right, something's wrong with this build of Precision X. It's an ongoing project. Don't hold it against EVGA. That's not even the one that's on their website. Um, it's a, it's a like early access build or something. So if you've got a 30 series card, an EVGA card, you might want to maybe try MSI Afterburner as well and see if you get any better results. But with that said, our lunch is approaching now. And, um, and I reached out to EVGA and they suggested I try this because there may be a bug in the software they need to look at. Uh, so they're on it. But uh, I opened a PX1, I set the settings that I wanted, saved it, and then closed the app entirely and ran it. And we got a 14,784, so we came up even more. Hey, it's a rhyme. The words sound the same. So let's see if that's enough to get us uh, where we need to be. Ooh, we beat him. Ooh, who's Lord now? Hmm. So I'm curious now, can we get 125 to run? I'm gonna move away because again, phone and mic and all that stuff affects it. <laughs> Doesn't matter, I'm taking care of the problem right now. I was like, if we make it through this scene, we're good. It crashed right here last time and then... That's okay, time to cheat. I'm not providing you the tools I use to cheat either. Our biggest problem here is power limit. We fixed that problem. 214 ought to help. <laughs> so I'm gonna start off with actually a zero clock uh, offset because now that we're not having power limit, keep us from, so here's the thing, if we were asking for this, but power limit only let us get here, what happens is if we ask for more, it lets us go up a little bit and then come back. And that little bit that comes and then come back is the part where we hope we keep that little bit for as long as possible to get the scores to come up. Now we're gonna get probably everything we're asking for. We are now going to reach clock stability before limits, before we'll hit power limits, obviously. So I'm gonna go back to 12, no, 1300 on the memory though, because that's where we were. And I'm just gonna let the core clock do its thing. And I'm gonna see what our score is now with the AC that's been sitting here running with the card at idle now for a while, so it's as cold as it's gonna get. And power limit letting the core go wherever it wants to go. I think 2070, I think is as far as it'll let it go. I do think out of the box, the boost table for this card will allow it to try and get to 2070, but it doesn't even get there with the power limits. So we might hit 2070 and just stay there across, which would mean our average core clock is higher, which means this should beat our old score, theoretically, without touching anything on the core clock. Never mind the fact that it's pinched the crap out of my finger off camera. Anyway, look at that. <laughs> well, would you just look at that? Chilo. All right, so now we got Cambater, Cambatar on our crosshairs. I don't know, with, a, with an offset, I think we can reach that. 15,000 and nice. Anyway, I was before the score popped up. I was like, "What do you think? Do you think we break fifteen thousand? He's like, "I don't know." <gasps> nice. <laughs> and it's sixty-nine FPS, dude. Double nice. <gasps> nice, nice. Now I'm excited to get two of these. 
All right, so 55, uh, plus 55 is what we got on the core clock. I think that was enough to trigger another boost bin because as you can see with our score, we got a uh, 15,148. So that's up obviously from where we were just a second ago. So we've gained seven C of temperature versus before we did the power mod. So now is where ice water and stuff like that would clearly help because we need to get those down. We already showed you core temp, even at those small temperature ranges can make a huge difference. And that shows you how much heat is in these cards that I've got, what, 50 degree air Fahrenheit, 50 degree Fahrenheit air blowing at it, which is this much in C, which is much lower than 55 C obviously. Last run, this is where either it makes it or it breaks it. Yeah, it's crashing now because the temps are just getting too high. 55 C is just too warm for stability. So there's one last thing we need to do before I end this video is I need to take this card apart. I wanna see if we have a, a water block that will even like line up with this thing. I don't want a full cover water block on this because condensation is a biscuit. <laughs> and it's, it sucks because it's easy for condensation to make it in places you can't put paper towels and stuff. So I always like to try, try and adapt CPU blocks to it wherever we can because what that allows me to do is get direct contact on the die. Yeah, those do not line up. Ugh. These are too narrow. So here's the thing. This is more of a rectangle. The distance from there to there is shorter than from there to there. So if you take a look at the 30 series or the 20 series, you can see the holes are much wider between there, 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 and there, which allowed us to take a CPU block and go, wow, the holes line up. <laughs> we can mount the CPU block like that. I need to come up with a way to mount a water block to it like this. I don't know how I'm gonna do that yet. Dude, just make a bracket that, yeah, I can't just and have a bracket up here. <laughs> Obviously that would be a simple fix, but I don't have machining equipment or materials to do that. And I think that is the perfect place to end this edition of RIPGN because we've got some engineering to do.